Hi, my name's Andy Cockgreave and I've got a quick video about axis lengths and do they matter, particularly when communicating data about the coronavirus. Alice Casey sent a tweet questioning the axis length in this chart from the BBC. The chart shows data from the Chinese Disease Control and Prevention Centre about mortality rates of the disease so far. Now, here's her issue. She says, we've got an issue with the length of this bar. Because what happens when we look at a bar like that, we think, wow, the bar's going all the way to the right-hand edge of the chart. That looks like everybody who's aged 80 or plus is dying from this disease. Time to get very nervous and worried about the disease. But it's only then, and it's only the people who look at the bottom right of the corner of the chart that realize that that bar actually only goes to 15% of cases. So we have a question, should it go to 100 or should it not? It's not a mistake by the BBC in normal circumstances just to show 15% of max. But what we have is a period of real concern. Fake news or panic seems viable and we want as data communicators to consider how best to show data in the real light. 15% is the death rate for people aged 80 or above, which means for every 100 people who've had the disease in China, remember 85 of them actually survived. So the problem with the BBC's chart is not the data they're showing, it's the data they're not showing. Let's take a look at some ways we could fix this. First, I tried just putting the labels on the bars itself, but I feel, yes, people will read that, but they might still see the length of the bar and be a bit alarmed. This, I believe, is the chart Alice had in mind. If we just extend the axis to 100, then now we see that the bar actually isn't very long at all because this goes to 100%. We can also affect the title and change how people read these charts. So by changing the title, now there's a question that more accurately frames what people are seeing. But I still think one key issue is this missing data, the survival rate. So what if we actually visualize the survival rate as well? In this case, blue is the people who, survived, uh, who died and gray is the people who survived. So now you see the people who survived as well as the people who died. Uh, I actually think finally I would remove the labels. Now I've got both categories visualized. And I've also really framed the question to specifically refer to where this data source comes from. This data source is about 44,000 cases in China. And I think even though perhaps in other circumstances I might make the title simpler, in this period where we need to be very careful about how we communicate data, it's worth putting information about the data source in the title. Because we don't know if this mortality rate is represented globally or is changing. So Alice raised a tweet uh, suggesting that the one on the right was a bit alarmist. It's not a mistake to visualize like data like this. And I think, yes, if we wanted to be as least alarmist as possible, maybe we could think about visualizing the same data in the way we've got it on the right. So I'd like to thank Alice for making out the tweet. I thought this was an interesting exercise uh, and just hope as data communicators, we can continue to do our best to spread news in a very calm, collective and realistic way, showing all the data so people can make their own conclusions. Take care.